Good afternoon. It's uh, Roland from East Marsh Acres, and I just wanted to document what we've been up to. So the remainder of the beans are sitting there. A uh, project that I have upcoming in the next little while is to repair this door to the high tunnel. And Trisha, this morning, or this afternoon, um, went and harvested the remainder of the carrots. Uh, some of them are very nice looking. Some of them have had some assistance from our friendly neighborhood rabbits. Those wily rabbits. And uh, others are just very, very large. Uh, note that uh, Trisha planted a variety of different colors. So you see the purples. large one here and you see the whitish carrots and you see the orange carrots and you see the different variety of, of carrots uh, this is eggplant of course and I've picked oh, probably about six or seven uh, larger ones here's a uh, green pepper well it's actually a red pepper that hasn't changed yet but it's starting to change and it's being eaten and here's another whitish carrot. So good haul um, from the carrots uh, this year. Uh, even with the predator um, herbivore pressure from the rabbits. And uh, on Wednesday, we'll be taking the uh, meat birds away. I'll give you another shot of what they look like. towards the end of the eight weeks. Now we've had some losses. Uh, we're down to 24 at this point in time. And we think there might be one more that's a little on the iffy side, whether they make it to freezer camp day. But they're looking pretty good otherwise. So there are the 24 birds that we have remaining from the 30 that we started with. So a loss of two uh, birds to begin with as chicks. And then uh, they're moving in the direction of being uh, complete broilers at this point. Now you can tell that they're a little on the warm side. You take a look at some of them are laying uh, to the side and they've got their feet out from underneath them allowing the feet to actually uh, radiate heat into the environment. Uh, only a few are actively feeding. We moved them maybe half an hour ago or so and uh, allowed them to uh, acclimate to a new set of greens and they did a uh, fair amount of feeding of the greens to begin with. They've had lots of temperature changes that they've had to deal with since the beginning of September. Uh, these birds have been with us since that first week of September, just after Labor Day. Three weeks in the brooder, and then the following five weeks to the, uh, to the outdoor chicken tractor, as we call it, which has held up quite well. So this is the second round for this year. And there's a couple of places where I have to tighten the screws and things. But uh, generally speaking, they've uh, done very, very well. And the weather itself is absolutely glorious, spectacular. Um, I don't know if you can see them down there. The leaves are starting to fall off them now, but the sugar maples are bright, bright red. I've been um, documenting them as uh, we've gone through the changes in the last three weeks or so. Um, many of the trees are basically at the end of their seasonal cycle, losing all their leaves that they gained in the spring. At some point I'll uh, bring you through the processes that um, are involved in uh, creating those leaves, why the leaves are created in the first place. Basically it comes down to Photosynthesis, 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 which is basically the same idea that we have for the roof of the house. So we use solar energy to create energy.
plants uh, perspective that's done in terms of taking carbon dioxide and water and creating plant sugars uh, otherwise known as glucose, fructose, and a variety of other similar kinds of structures, C6, C5, carbon, uh, 5 carbon or 6 carbon, uh, usually cycles or um, chain, chains, and then you take those glucose molecules and you string them together and you end up with starches, and the starches are what we primarily need to uh, to survive because we take those starches complex sugars carbohydrates still and we break them down and they provide energy for our uh, life and here we still see is it the pawpaws we planted earlier so there's the pawpaw right there basically lost all of its leaves except one. There's another pawpaw here, which has lost all of its leaves. There it is right there. And we have the elderberry, famous for the elderberry wine. All the berries are gone. I picked those a while back. Here's another elderberry and yet another elderberry. So we've got three of those, two pawpaws, and then we've got a number of, so you can see the bright red, those are blueberries, bright red plants for a blueberry. Anyways, it's kind of interesting strike. Oh, there's the third one over there, and there's the fourth one. So there's the third one right there, third blueberry, fourth blueberry, oh, right here, this is where the steak is, the plant is basically done for. So we've got those three and then there's another blueberry plant up there. And then this is a nanny berry. One and two. And this is the area where we're going to be placing the, the bridge next spring when we build it. Allowing us to do straight transverse from here to the gardens, to the chickens, uh, without having to go down the, uh, the road. And here are our two peach trees. So there's one there. And a second one. And these plants that are growing at the base are uh, valuable too. Um, can't remember the names of them. Uh, this is a nectarine. We ended up with one nectarine for the year. Um, Anyways, we can cut these uh, plants down. They'll come back there. Um, <coughs> perennial. And uh, they provide nutrients back to the so soil once we uh, cut them down. Um, don't think I showed you. We bought a Rose of Sharon tree, which is related to hibiscus. Uh, which are my favorite uh, kinds of plants. And the Rose of Sharon has basically gone into hibernation at this point in time with the frost that we ended up with last week. And here we've got the uh, uh, bird feeders that have been frequented by quite a number of nice little birds. Um, here we have a number of oh, hostas variety kinds and of course the goldenrod that taken over wood that we'll be using for burning uh, for some winter campfires and then I have to take the hose out of this area yet 
it's actually stuck underneath that pile at this point in time. So I have to lift it up somehow and get the hose out. Um, it should be relatively simple. Oh, yes. So here, Trisha is uh, soaking peat moss so that we can put peat moss around the base bases of the um, blueberry plants and uh, the blueberry plants like very acidic soil and so we'll be uh, changing the environment just around the base of the blueberry plants and replanting them in the general area that's here in front of this tree moving to this corner so it'll be a little bit more uh, managed area than what it was this past year. Um, so many of the other plants in our front garden here, or front yard, whichever way you want it, uh, have started to go into dormancy as well. The uh, locust tree, sunburst locust, and I can't remember what these plants are. Uh, that one and these ones. That one. The uh, junipers that you see in the back are doing fairly nicely and the blue spruce have come along quite nicely this year. You can tell the difference between last year's growth and this year's growth. So this year's growth is a lighter color than the other and the needles tend to be a little bit on the longer side for the first little while and then they'll decrease in size over time. Here you can see the typical blue spruce kind of coloration to the new growth that you see on the, the apex at the top of the tree itself. And then there's another, a third one there. So the idea here is that we, when these grow up, they can grow up to be, you know, 60 feet tall or so. Um, maybe not quite that, that tall, but uh, definitely 30 to 40. And uh, they will then hide the majority of the, uh, the power station that we have here and uh, allow us to have a little bit more naturalization or closer to uh, a national natural kind of uh, space rather than the very man-made version that it is right now. Anyways, I think I'm going to uh, tie this one off right here. Um, I have a concert that I have to perform at tonight and I need to get ready, do a uh, shower and all those kinds of things. So um, thank you so much for your support. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please click the subscribe button um, down below the, uh, the actual video itself. And we will see you soon on the next one. Uh, bye for now.